Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Chapter 23, problem number 14, Gauss law. This is about flux and non conducting shells. A charged particle is suspended at the center of uh, two concentric spherical shells that are very thin. So, this is important. Shells are very thin and made of non conducting material. Figure A uh, shows a cross section. Figure B gives the net flux phi through a Gaussian sphere centered on the particle as a function of radius r of the sphere. The scale of the vertical axis is said by phi s is equal to phi into 10 to the power 5 newton per newton meter square per coulomb. What is the charge on the central particle? What are the charges, net charges on shell A and shell B? So, uh, we have a cross section here, we have a charged particle at the center, then we have charged spherical shells. Flux varies, we will talk about it. Uh, phi s shown in the graph, phi s shown in the graph is equal to 5 into 10 to the power 5. So, phi s is equal to 5 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb up to phi s 0 is here okay 0 is here we have 1 2 3 4 5 5 divisions that means each division is 1 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb so each division each division i write it here one this is the first division so 1 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb so each division division is 1 into 10 to the power 5 so we'll have 1 into 10 to the power 5, 2 into 10 to the power 5, 3 into 10 to the power 5, 4 into 10 to the power 5, then 5 into 10 to the power 5. And on this side, minus 1 into 10 to the power 5, minus 2 into 10 to the power 5, minus 3 into 10 to the power 5, and so on. Now what we need to understand here is, this flux, this is uh, flux through a Gaussian surface as a function of the radius. So uh, we have a charged particle here, charged particle Q here. I can draw a Gaussian surface sphere like this of radius say R1, then another Gaussian surface here of radius R2, then another Gaussian surface here of radius R3. So what is flux through this one? What is flux through this Gaussian surface with a different radius? What is flux through this Gaussian surface with a different radius? So flux may vary with the radius, okay, because of the configuration given. Flux may vary through the Gaussian surface with radius of the Gaussian surface. That is given here, okay, that is given here. Interesting point to note here is flux from, from 0 to say this point A, let's call this A, is constant, positive constant. Then from B to A to let's call this B is again negative constant. Then B onwards to whatever is again positive constant. So from 0 to A, it is positive constant, flux is positive constant. Means if you uh, draw different Gaussian surfaces or different radii, from A to uh, 0 to A, flux is same, flux is same. And then from A to B, then from A to B, if you draw different Gaussian surfaces or different radii, flux is same, flux does not change. Then from B to onwards, if you draw different Gaussian surfaces, flux is same. But every time you have a different value for the flux in these sections. Now, what is going on here? Okay, what is going on here? If I draw this, uh, let's suppose this is having a charge of Q1, the central particle. If I draw a Gaussian surface, if I draw a Gaussian surface uh, within the within shell A, okay, within shell A, I'll draw a Gaussian uh, sphere. I'll draw a Gaussian sphere here. I may draw a Gaussian sphere here. I may draw a Gaussian sphere here. So these are different Gaussian spheres of different radii, but all of them are lying within A. Okay, all of them are lying within A. Now from Gauss law, we already know, we already know flux is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Now all these Gaussian spheres which I have drawn here, charge enclosed is Q1. Charge enclosed is just Q1, this particle here. If you consider shell 1, which I have drawn there, if you consider this shell here, if you consider this shell here, or if you consider this spherical shell Gaussian surface, all of them are enclosing the same charge Q1. If charge enclosed is the same, then flux through them is also same. 
so flux for all these shells spherical shells spherical Gaussian uh, shells which I have drawn here is same that means that it's independent of their radius but I'm drawing remember I'm drawing all the shells within shell A okay within this non-conducting shell A so that's why you see flux constant here flux constant so what we can conclude here is that shell A shell A is having a radius of let me use a different is having a radius of a shell a is having a radius of a because a onward situation will change if i consider a gaussian sphere if i consider a gaussian sphere from a to b from a to b i draw a gaussian sphere here this is a gaussian sphere i draw another gaussian sphere here another gaussian sphere here now, these Gaussian spheres are enclosing charge of the particle and charge of shell A. Let's call that charge as Q2. So, charge enclosed by these two shells is Q1 plus Q2. And both of them, yeah, you can draw as many as you want to between A and B. All of the shells which you draw here between A and B will enclose the same charge Q1 and Q2. If they enclose the same charge Q1 and Q2, then flux through them will be same. Flux through them will be same. Okay, so all the spherical shells you draw, all the Gaussian spheres you draw between A and B, flux is going to be same because they enclose the same charge Q1 and Q2, Q1 plus Q2. That constant is there. Remember, these shells were enclosing only charge Q1, so flux is different. These shells are now enclosing charge Q1 plus Q2, so flux is different, but constant. Okay, but constant. Then if you draw any Gaussian sphere, if you draw any Gaussian sphere outside here, whatever the radius they will enclose the charge q1 plus q2 plus q3 including the charge of shell b so charge enclosure will be same flux will be same flux is same okay flux is same so this is to say this is to say that shell b is having a radius of b because after b situation changes after b flux changes from 0 to a okay from 0 to a flux is constant having this value from A to B, from A to B, flux is here. Then from B onwards, flux is here. Okay. So shell A is having radius A, shell B is having radius B, which are here A and B. Now we have to find out charges. Okay. We have to find out charges. Let's first consider uh, uh, charged particle, this one. This one is having charge Q1. I'll consider a Gaussian sphere here. Gaussian sphere here and use Gauss law simple flux through this Gaussian sphere is Q enclosed which is Q1 which is Q1 divided by epsilon 0 this implies Q1 is equal to epsilon 0 phi and flux through this Gaussian surface you already know is here One, remember this uh, scale is set at 5 this is set at 5 into 10 to the power 5 newton per coulomb newton meter square per coulomb newton meter square per coulomb is it plus 5 or minus 5 plus 5 yes so each division remember i talked about it each division is 1 into 10 to the power 5 so this is 1 this is 2 here we have 2 into 10 to the power 5 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb so flux we already know 2 into 10 to the power 5 and epsilon 0 we already know so uh, q1 is equal epsilon 0 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 then flux is 2 into 10 to the power 5 both are in si system so charge will get in coulombs so 8 into 8.85 into 2 into all this i have worked out it is 1.8 into 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs which is to say 1.8 micro coulombs so q1 charge of the central particle 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs now let's find out charge of shell a okay we'll find out charge of shell a Okay, we'll find out charge of shell A now. So, uh, this central particle we already know has a charge of Q1 
and this one has a charge of q2 which we are to find out now we'll consider a gaussian sphere here between a and b what is charge enclosed by this gaussian sphere is q1 plus q2 charge of the particle and charge of shell a q1 plus q2 and what is flux through it we already know that from the graph see this is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 4 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb so flux is minus 4 into 10 to the power 5 so charge enclosed from gauss law from Gauss law, we know charge enclosure, which is Q1 plus Q2, is equal to epsilon 0 phi. Epsilon 0 phi. Epsilon is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. Then flux is minus 4 into 10 to the power 5. This is important. Minus 4 into 10 to the power 5. Minus sign is important. Okay. Now, uh, this comes out to be, so this implies Q2 is equal to, this thing I have worked out is... Uh, minus 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 3.5 into 10 to the power 6 this much okay then q1 we'll take to this side minus q1 and q1 we already know is uh, 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs so minus 3.5 minus 1.8 uh, this is minus 5.8 minus 5.3 into 10 to the power this is minus 6 minus 6 coulombs so this is charge of shell a q2 equal to minus 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 uh, coulombs q2 or you can write minus 5.3 micro coulombs So this is charge of shell A. So we got charge of the central particle. We got charge of shell A. Now we had to find out charge of shell B. Okay. We had to find out charge of shell B. Again, same procedure. Nothing different. We'll uh, consider a Gaussian surface. We'll consider a Gaussian sphere here. Co-centric with the other ones. Now flux through this Gaussian surface we already know is here which is one two no one two three four five and six this one is six into ten to the power five newton meter square per coulomb so we already know flux through this one what is charge enclosed by this one q1 shell a q2 and shell b let's call charge q3 so charge enclosed by this gaussian surface is q1 plus q2 plus q3 now let's use gauss law to find out charge so q1 plus q2 plus q3 is equal epsilon 0 times flux epsilon 0 is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 into flux is 6 into 10 to the power 5 6 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb we are using everything in si system so uh, what we'll get is also in si system so we'll get charge in coulombs so this implies q3 is equal to now this thing is equal to 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 this is this part then uh, minus q1 minus q2 minus q1 remember uh, q1 was 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6 then minus q2 minus q2 q2 was uh, minus 5.3 minus 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 okay now this i have worked out uh, comes out to be this comes out to be 8.8 .8 into 10 to the power 8.8 .8 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs which can be written as 8.8 .8 micro coulombs so this is q3 charge of shell 3 so central particle has a charge of uh, plus 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6 shell a has a charge of minus 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb and shell b has a charge of 8.8 .8 plus 8.8 .8 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs right that'll do for this session